Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to view this presentation on worker safety. We believe that the adaption of these core competencies into practices will improve the outcomes for children and behavioral health needs in their families. These foundational modules are developed to be viewed by family members, higher education students, paraprofessionals, and professionals. This module is presented by Adele Gallant, Fast Forward Program Manager at New Hampshire's Department of Health and Human Services. The New Hampshire Children's Behavioral Health Workforce Development Network's mission is to build a sustainable infrastructure for the professional development of the children's behavioral health workforce based upon the core competencies and infused with the system of care core values and guiding principles. The need is for New Hampshire to have an adequate workforce and an infrastructure to support those who work with children, youth, and families. The New Hampshire Children's Behavioral Health core competencies were developed in 2011 by a representation of diverse stakeholder groups, including child-serving community mental health providers, family organizations, state policymakers, and university staff. The goal was that the competencies would be the first step in developing a systemic and comprehensive human services development infrastructure. The competencies were developed using the system of care core values and principles as the foundation. There are seven domains, family-driven and youth-guided practice, cultural and linguistic competence, childhood development and disorders, screening, assessment, and referral, treatment planning, interventions, and service delivery, systems knowledge and collaboration, and quality improvement. The competencies are organized for professional staff by levels of knowledge and skills in each domain. There are three levels, foundational, intermediary, and advanced. The levels are designed to identify the skill level of practitioners. They are fluid and not specifically tied to certain formal education and training or position titles. A copy of this report can be accessed and the link is provided at the end of this presentation. This is one of a series of modules designed to support the development of core competencies in the children's behavioral health workforce. This foundational health and safety module will review appropriate and professional workplace boundaries and guidelines for workers to stay safe during home visits. The ability to set and maintain professional boundaries is critical to an effective, sustainable career in human services. Human service workers make judgments regarding boundaries on a daily basis, and these decisions affect not only their own well-being, but also that of their clients and colleagues. Not even the most skilled worker can anticipate every situation in which challenges to professional boundaries may arise. At the same time, every worker can and should examine in an ongoing way how her or his professional boundaries enhance or harm her or his relationships with clients and her or his ability to cope with work-related stressors. Examine your motivations for devoting extra time and attention to particular clients. Although some clients require more energy than others, treating one client differently than you do others may be a cue that your boundaries are overextended. In such situations, Assess whether your services are congruent with the client's care plan, your job description, your professional scope of service, and your organization's mission. Be discriminate in your use of social media. For example, avoid friending clients on Facebook and limit the amount and type of online information you make available to the public or even to your friends' social networks to prevent conflicts of interest with clients. Similarly, don't attempt to access, without informed consent, online information about your clients. Realize, too, that posting negative information about your workplace on social media may demonstrate a lack of respect for colleagues and your employer. Always remember that no worker can work harder to meet case goals than a client themselves. Find ways to nurture yourself throughout your workday and during your commute. Take regular lunch breaks, if possible, away from your desk, outside of your car, or otherwise apart from work responsibilities. Find ways to change 
up the pace of your day. Stand and stretch occasionally if you sit at a desk. Listen to music, an audiobook, or an enjoyable radio program while driving to the client's visits or during your commute. Take a brief walk or simply breathe deeply and mindfully for a full minute. Be attuned to the ways in which you absorb work stresses and take steps to manage that stress. Even workers with excellent external boundaries, supportive colleagues, and manageable caseloads often find themselves, quote, taking work home on an emotional level. This can result in persistent worry about client situations while away from the job or unfounded fears of professional inadequacy. Devote time off the job to activities that nurture you. Spending time with your family or friends, reading, watching a movie, singing, journaling, meditating, exercising, or other diversions can re-energize you to return to work. Your safety should be at the forefront of your mind. You are responsible for ensuring your own safety. If you cannot keep yourself safe, then you can't keep anyone else safe. Feeling safe will allow you to keep coming back to work day after day. Each person is responsible for their own safety. Ask questions and try to connect experience with people whenever possible. Most home visits that a worker has, there will be no problems, but just in case, always be concerned and aware. Know the individual or family that you are meeting with. Understand that you will have a different level of awareness depending on how well you know each family. Know your resources and have a plan of action. Know your agency's protocols and plans of intervention. Know yourself and maintain your composure. Beware of your own buttons and triggers. As a reminder, not all communication is verbal. Don't be afraid of silence. Be aware of what someone is saying with their expressions and body language, not just their words. Be aware that you cannot always tell how someone perceives what it is that you are saying. Another individual's interpretation of communication is based half upon what your facial expression is, a quarter on the tone of your voice, and less than 10% on what it is that you are actually saying. Be mindful of what you are conveying with your entire self. Escalating behavior falls into three categories, verbal, physical, and body language or gestures. Acknowledge the behavior of someone escalating without judgment. Talk about what you are seeing to someone and how it is that they are behaving. Based upon what can be going on for your own client, you should try to understand this and help them understand why their behavior is escalating. Setting limits and agreed upon goals can include something as simple as, quote, we'll have to end this visit and reschedule or continue it at the office if you cannot stop calling me names or banging things around, etc. On the way to an address, be calm and anticipate the scene. Upon arrival, park so you can't be blocked, and in a well-lit area. When arriving upon a home, never open a closed door from someone just yelling, come in, through a closed door. Please wait for the person to come and open the door themselves. If someone has a pet, ask them to place the pet behind a gate or a closed door. Once inside someone's home, scan the area and be aware of your surroundings. Never do a home visit or an interview in a bedroom. When leaving someone's house, have the person lead you out and follow them to the door. Be mindful that most potential weapons in anyone's home are in the kitchen, and typically the best place to visit at someone's home is in the living room. Real health core competencies in this module are made possible from grant funding from the Endowment for Health, Fast Forward, a SAMHSA grant awarded to New Hampshire's Department of Health and Human Services, and the many people who are passionate about helping children, youth, and families. Thank you for joining us on this.